Hello and welcome to the basics of Animal Companions in Pathfinder 2nd Edition. This video builds on information delivered in our Basics of Animals course, so if you have not already viewed that video, you are encouraged to do so before continuing. Animal Companions are specialized creatures that differ from normal animals in several key ways. First, Animal Companions are obtained through class abilities and feats, such as the Animal Companion feat that Druids may choose at first level. Second, Animal Companions have a few special advantages and limitations. For example, you're limited to only having one Animal Companion at a time. Also, Animal Companions may only receive the benefits of item bonuses that modify their speed or armor class. There's nothing stopping you from dressing your Ape Companion with magical armbands, a cloak, and a necklace, but the only bonuses they'll receive are those that boost their speed or armor class. And item bonuses to armor class are capped at a maximum of plus three for Animal Companions. Also, animals may never use the Activate an Item action, so any gear that requires activation is beyond an Animal Companion's ability to use. One of their biggest advantages is Animal Companions effectively level up as you do, and will use your level to calculate their proficiency bonuses and their hit points. They may also grow more powerful as you level up if you choose to select some additional feats that cause your companion to mature and gain new abilities. Also, if your animal companion ever dies, you can gain a new companion after spending one week of downtime. Exactly how you spend this week is largely up to you and your GM. A champion might spend a week in prayer to their deity, asking them to send a new warhorse. Rangers and druids might spend the week finding an animal in the wilds and spending the week training it to be their new companion. And what is likely the biggest difference between animal companions and other animals is that the animal companions have the minion trait. Thanks to the minion trait, you will have direct control over your animal companion and they will act during your turn in the initiative order. You still need to use command an animal and issue a verbal command, but this functions differently when used with an animal companion. First, there is no need to roll a nature check when using command an animal. Second, you only need to spend one action when commanding your animal companion. And third, when you spend that one action on command an animal, your companion gains two actions that they can spend during the same turn. Animal companions are completely limited to those two actions. They do not receive three actions per turn like most creatures. During combat, your animal companion begins each turn with zero actions and no reactions either. You must use command an animal to give that companion two actions for it to spend during that turn. If you don't use command an animal, then the companion will only defend itself or move away to avoid obvious harm as the GM decides is appropriate. Otherwise, they just sit there waiting for your next command. And if a full minute passes without you issuing a command, then animal companions will stop waiting for your commands and begin following their own instincts. This is a little hazy as to what it means in terms of combat, but since combat encounters are unlikely to last over a minute, I believe this provision is simply meant to say that the animal companion will follow along and do animal-like things outside of combat without you needing to constantly declare that you are issuing them orders. And in a similar line of thought, it's worth noting that animal companions do not panic at the first sign of danger and therefore do not suffer the frightened four and fleeing conditions at the start of combat like most other normal animals do. To determine the stats for your companion, you start by selecting a companion type. This is the foundation for all of their scores and abilities. A young animal companion has all of the scores listed in their companion type. So let's look at badgers as an example. It's a small size animal. It has two melee attack options, both of which cost one action to perform. Companions have trained proficiency in unarmed attacks, so at first level, your badger companion would have a plus five bonus for these attacks and would deal plus two damage thanks to their strength modifier. 
The next line shows the companion's ability modifiers. The hit points that you see listed on the companion type block are not its total hit points. Instead, this entry shows the companion's ancestry hit points. All animal companions gain 6 hit points plus their constitution modifier per your level in experience in addition to those ancestry hit points. So a first level badger animal companion has 16 hit points. They get 8 ancestry hit points that you see they're listed in their companion type plus 6 for first level plus 2 more for its constitution modifier. Each companion type also receives training proficiency in one skill. This is in addition to acrobatics and athletics, which all companions have trained proficiency in by default. The rest of the companion type entry details the companion senses, their speed and support ability, which we'll talk about in just a moment. The last line of the companion type entry shows their advanced maneuver. These advanced maneuvers are not available at first level and must be gained through special feats. This still leaves a few items that you will need to calculate for yourself. All animal companions are trained in unarmored defense, so a first level badger companion has an armor class of 15, and they also have trained proficiency in both light and heavy barding. Companions are also trained in all three saving throws, so in the case of a badger companion, they would have plus 5 in each of those, and they are also trained in perception which in the case of the badger here would again be plus 5 at first level. So this is where companions start, but as you level up, there are feats available to enhance your companions even further. Most animal companions begin as young animals. Advancing your animal companion from young to mature requires the use of a special feat. In the case of druids, for example, this is the very aptly named mature animal companion feat. Mature companions increase their strength, dexterity, constitution, and wisdom modifiers by one. Their unarmed attack damages increase from one die to two dice, and their proficiency levels in perception and all of their saving throws increase from trained to expert. They gain training proficiency in intimidation, stealth, and survival. If the animal companion already had training in one of those skills, then that skill gains expert proficiency instead. And if the animal companion is size medium or smaller, then it grows one size. Once an animal companion is mature, it can advance again to become either a nimble or savage animal companion. Nimble companions increase their dexterity modifier by two and their strength, constitution, and wisdom modifiers by one. They deal an extra two points of damage with their unarmed attacks and gain expert proficiency in acrobatics and unarmored defense. Savage companions increase their strength modifier by two and their dexterity, constitution, and wisdom modifiers by one. They also deal an extra three points of damage with their unarmed attacks and gain expert proficiency in athletics. Savage companions also grow one size category if they are medium or smaller as mature companions. Both nimble and savage companions also gain the advanced maneuver that is listed with their companion type and their attacks are now treated as magical for the purposes of ignoring resistances. Animal companions also have special support abilities that are determined by their companion type. Using support only costs one of the companion's two actions, but you are greatly limited in how you can spend the other action. Basically, if you want to use the support ability, the companion can either use support and do nothing else that turn, or they can spend an action to move and then use their support ability. They cannot use their support ability and then move. What happens when support is used varies from animal to animal, but let's take a look again at the Badger stat block. Here it says that if you use the support action, hit and deal damage to an enemy being threatened by the Badger, then that enemy cannot use the step action until the start of your next turn. 
check out pages 215 and 216 to see each companion type and their support abilities. All animal companions may be ridden by you or an ally if they are at least one size category larger than the person wanting to ride them. But unless the companion has the mount special ability, there are a few limitations to be aware of. When an animal companion is carrying a rider, it can only use its land speed. So, for example, if your animal companion was a giant badger, it would be possible to ride it, but you would be limited to its land speed of 25. It would not be able to use its climb speed with a character riding atop it. And normally animal companions can move and then use their support ability on the same turn, but while mounted, an animal companion cannot do both. If you want to use the animal's support ability while mounted, that will be the only thing that the animal companion does on your turn. And again, these restrictions only apply to animal companions that do not have the mount special ability. Companions with the mount special ability, like horses, ignore both of these limitations. In this video, we discussed the basics of animal companions. As a reminder, animal companions should not be confused with normal animals or animal familiars. See our other videos that discuss those topics. Animal companions are loyal comrades that are controlled by players or NPCs. They are most commonly thought of as partners for druids and rangers, but can also be a champion's mount or other significant animal friend. Animal companions are gained through class feats. Their hit points and proficiencies increase as the player gains levels. When an animal companion dies, it may be replaced with one week of downtime. Animal companions have the minion trait. Each round, players must spend one action on command an animal to grant their companion two actions to be spent during the same turn. If the player does not spend an action on command an animal to do this, their companion will only defend themselves or move away from obvious danger, as the GM believes is appropriate. Also, animal companions have no reactions to spend on other people's turns. And animal companions are immune to the panic that most animals face when they enter combat. All of an animal companion's stats are derived from their companion type. Each companion type has a special support ability that they get immediately, and an advanced maneuver that must be gained through other feats. When an animal companion is gained, it is young. Another feat is required to advance the companion to maturity, and a third feat may be taken to further improve the companion into either a nimble or savage companion. If a companion's support ability is used, it can take no other actions that turn other than moving into position to perform the support ability, and animal companions may be ridden if they are at least one size category larger than the player, but suffer a few restrictions unless they have the mount special ability. Before we close, I'd like to take a moment to thank all of our patrons. These videos would not be possible without their continued generosity and support. Members of the Basics for Gamers Patreon community receive special benefits, like getting to vote on the topics that we cover in the future, and also, they get to see these videos one week and ad-free before everybody else. Visit the link shown on the left of the screen and in the description if you'd like to know more about becoming a patron. If you would like to support this channel and help it grow, the easiest way to do that is by subscribing and clicking the bell icon so you get notified when new videos release. And we can always be reached through our Twitter and Facebook pages too. Thanks for watching, take care, and we will see you soon with more Basics of Pathfinder.